Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Pastor Joseph of House of Praise, Church of the Living God. We come here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We want to thank all of you that will be watching by way of YouTube on today. We want to thank all of you that came out this morning to worship with us in person. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> we know that you could have visited with any church. You chose ours and we take that not lightly. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We ask that you forgive us of any sins we may have committed, knowingly or unknowingly, and we cause anyone to fall by the wayside. Have mercy upon us. This is our Sunday morning Bible study lesson. We pray that something be said that can encourage you and draw you closer to the Lord. Let us go ahead and get in the spirit. And what I mean by get in the spirit, open up your heart, mind, and soul to receive the word from the Lord on today. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. All right, Sister Joseph going to come and give us our scripture and our opening prayer and a worship song, and then we're going to go high in the Lord. Give her a hand clap as she come. Good morning. We thank you all for coming out this morning. Give yourself a round of applause for coming out to worship with us. Amen. We thank you for coming out to worship with us on our morning Bible study. We take that not for granted. We're so happy to see everyone on this beautiful, blessed Sunday. Amen. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, <coughs> touch your spirit, your soul, heart, and mind. Open up your ears to receive what the Lord is trying to say to us on today. Again, you're welcome once, twice, three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading is Psalm 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I okay. shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou yeah. prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Yeah. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearers and readers and doers of his word. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for another chance. Thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, O Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but I'm so happy that you did it. Thank you that our covers was not our right machine. Thank you that we're in our right mind. Thank you that we have the activities of our limbs. Thank you that we was able to walk in this morning and not be carried in by sins. And we take that not for granted. Thank you that we're on top of the ground and the ground is not on top of us. Thank you for everyone that came out to worship with us on today, O oh, Heavenly Father. And we take that not for granted. We thank you, Lord, for food on our table. We thank you for clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet. Thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And if we are offended, our brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm asking you to forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, creating us a pure and clean heart, and renew within us a right spirit. Lord, I speak blessings on every person as he under the sound of my voice. No weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. They are blessed from the top of their head down to the sole of their feet. Anything they set their heart and minds to do, they shall prosper in Jesus' name. Father, we want to continue to lift up the man of God, continue to feed him with more wisdom and knowledge and more understanding of your word that he may feed us and that we may go out and feed others and tell others about you, O Heavenly Father, because we are living in the last days and we don't know when you're going to return, but we do know that you're going to return. 
return. So help us to make sure that we be ready and to help us to reach as many lost souls before you return. And we thank you, Father. Continue to lift me up and let me be a light to this dark and dying world that people may see the Jesus in me and come crying, asking what must they do to be saved. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come to praise him. All right. We come to praise him. We come to praise him and lift his holy name. We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him and lift His holy name. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, you are to praise Him. Why you have a chance? We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him and lift His holy name. We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him. We come to praise Him and lift His holy name. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. We come to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise yes. that He so rightfully deserves. Amen. Amen. This is gonna be a good lesson right here. All right. This is gonna be our Bible study lesson, and it's gonna go for two weeks. I already know I'm not gonna finish. But what I really want y'all to do, uh, those of you that are here today, and those of you that will be watching by YouTube, I want you to take into heart what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in these last days. And you can be sheltered in Christ because God didn't hide nothing from us. He left us the word of God for our learning, and for our guidance. And one of the best ways to learn is learn from the mistakes of others. You don't have to experience hardship if you will just take heed to what the word of God teaches mm -hmm. and from the mistakes of others. Right. Amen. Amen. So our topic is called No Turning Back. Amen. So we're going to be celebrating for the next two weeks. No Turning Back. Amen. And I'm going to give you some good examples of some people in the Bible that turned back from God and it cost them mm -hmm. some dire consequences. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, I don't plan on turning back. I don't plan, I don't on, turning plan on turning back. back. And God don't want us to turn back. Apostle Paul said he was going to press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Notice he didn't say he's going to walk toward the mark. He said he's going to press toward it. 
because I, the reason why I'm going to have to press my way because it's not going to be an easy journey. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 If the Lord told you, say, you know what, I want you to do this assignment for me, and at the end of the assignment, I'm going to give you one wish, whatever you demand of me, but I need you to walk to Louisiana. You think you can walk to Louisiana? Yeah, you can, but you're going to have to press your way. Oh, yes. You're going to take a little time now. Oh, yes. But it can be done. Amen. It's easier to drive mm -hmm. or to hitch a ride or to fly or even ride a bicycle. It's better than walking. Because it's faster. But to walk, you got to press your way. You got to rest. You got to have some good shoes. You got to be mentally prepared. You got to be in shape. So when you try to live for the Lord, you got to press your way. There's going to be all kind of things coming against you to deter you from your journey. We're on a journey, y'all. That's right. That's right. And that journey is I need to remain faithful till God call me home or in this world. And remaining faithful, ain't, it's easy to sin. You just sin. That's right. But to discipline myself and to be <laughs> holy and to be pleasing to God, it's going to take some faith. Mm -hmm. going to take some prison. Right. going to take some prayer. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to hurt somebody's feelings. You're going to have to walk on some people's toes. Right. Because things going to happen. And it's all a detour to get you off track with God. So our topic is called No Turning Back. Amen. Let's take a look at, and I'm going to just give you the reference where you can find it, but I'm not going to read the scripture. Because y'all, y'all, most of y'all watching by YouTube and most of y'all here today, y'all know about these people, what they did. Let's take a look at our first person, King Saul. God anointed him. He was the first king of Israel. God anointed him to be king. God didn't want him to have a king, but the people wanted the king. Mm -hmm. Ain't that to show you how God is our God? And sometimes even what he don't want for us, when we beg him for it, he'll give it to us, even though it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be careful what you pray for. That's right. Because oh, if you yeah. keep asking God for it, even though he knows you don't deserve it, or he don't want you to have it, he will give it to you. And the Bible is full of examples like that. Right. right. Well, why would God give me something that he know I don't need? Because he won't teach you a lesson. So Israel wanted the king, and God said, I don't want no king for y'all. I'm y'all king. I'm going to lead y'all. Why y'all not happy with me leading y'all? They say, yeah, but all the other nations got a king, so we want a king. Ain't that sound just like us? Mm -hmm. yeah. You gave him a raise. Why I can't get a raise? They got this. Why I can't do this? You did this for them. Why you can't do it for me? They got it. Why I can't do it? Why I can't do it? Why, 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 why? why are you looking around all other people's fence? The Wiz brother made a song called Sweep around <laughs> your own front door. That's right. That's right. Before you try to sweep around mine. Oh, yes. That's right. Amen. God say, this king not going to be a good king if I give y'all a king. And he going to take for himself and he going to yeah. mistreat y'all. They say, yeah, but we still want one. Mm -hmm. And he gave him one. And God anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel. And God. Remember how the Amalekites did Israel when they was traveling from slavery to the promised land, how this nation of people tried to attack them and forbid them from getting to the promised land, which was their destiny. Now Israel was doing good. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm doing good now. I'm doing better now. Doing See, they can't laugh at you and talk about you no more because you supposed to been counting out the picture a long time ago. But you're doing better now. And God said, I remember what Amalekite did to you. See, God will pay your enemies back. He'll get all your enemies. Mm. You may not like how he get them, but he's going to get them unless they repent and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why you, why do you think God tell you to pray for your enemies? So he can go light on them when he get them. Right. Pray for your enemies. So when you pray for them, God going to hear your prayer. Mm -hmm. And he won't do the harm he meant to do because you stand in the gap. Praying for your enemies. God want to go light on your enemies. He loves your enemies too. But that's why I ask you to pray for them. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. That's just like somebody chase your baby down, been bullying your kid, and you catch that little booger. And your son say, Mama, don't hurt him. That's my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But son, you say he was bullying you. Yeah, but he my friend, Mama. Don't hurt him. You ain't going to hurt him as much. Because you want to make your son. You want to please your son. 
That's why God actually prayed for you. Because God is he'll, he'll destroy them. Oh, yes. God told Saul, go kill the Amalekites. Destroy everything they have. Women, children, cow, horse. Don't take none of these spoils. Because I remember, with, kill them all. But Saul didn't do it. He turned away from God and did what he wanted to do. And he saved the king and the fattest animal for himself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And it cost him the throne. And he lost the throne because he did turn back from following God. Mm -hmm. A lot of people going through some stuff right now. It ain't the devil. Mm -hmm. Hello. Amen. Amen. Now we look to that and say, he talking about Saul. He talking about Saul. I can learn from what Saul did, how God did Saul. If you get this lesson, he ain't going to have to do it to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. And he gave the kingdom to a little boy named David. Mm -hmm. And Saul hated David because he knew that was going to be his successor. But David didn't do nothing to earn the kingdom. Saul disobeyed God. He said, walk down one person and he raised up. Could you be the next person he promotes? Amen. And he says up another. Amen. That's a lesson from Saul. Right. When God asks you to do something, do it. Right. Don't say the best for last. Don't try to get you nothing out the picture. Just do what he actually do. Then we're going to look at King Solomon. King Solomon was a young little king. He said, Lord, give me wisdom so I can know how to lead these great people, oh God, that you anointed me to be over. And God said, you just want to have wisdom to lead the people? That's a beautiful thing. You don't ask for long life or riches or money. He said, I'm going to give you both. I'm going to make you rich and I'm going to give you long life. That's right. Ain't that what everybody want? Live a long time and have a lot of money? Solomon was rich. Look to your neighbor and say, but old Father Time came along. Old Father Time came along. When he got old, he turned back from falling God. Huh. That's right. And he got them all kind of women that were heathen women. And he started worshiping their God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of them he built churches for them. That's right. And the thing displeased the Lord because he wasn't following the Lord fully like David, his father. And God took the kingdom from him and left him with one kingdom. He lost the king. He was the king of Israel. He was, he was king over all the whole kingdom. And God took the kingdom from him. Yep. I think he left him one or two. I could be wrong. But he, he didn't have 12 tribes. He was over. I think he was just over two. And God took the other 10 and gave it to another man that he really didn't want to give it to. But he wouldn't let you keep it because you done turned your back on me. I'm going to give it to your neighbor. Look to you and say, now my neighbor going to get my stuff. My neighbor ain't going to get my stuff. Because I'm going to learn from what? King Solomon. That's right. He married all the more foreign women. That's right. He didn't want a church woman. Mm -hmm. He wanted a street woman. Mm -hmm. Like some of y'all, you don't want a church man. You don't want a church woman. You don't want to raise your kids. You know, fill in the blank. You want to you wanna go to church, but you want to act like a heathen in the hood and on the job. and on. You know, learn from Solomon. Then we look at Adam and y'all know what Adam and Eve. They, you know, don't eat from this one little tree. Everything else y'all can have. What they do, eat from that tree. They listen. And they job was what they do wrong. Quit listening to the devil, some of y'all. That's right. Oh, that's right. Amen, pal. And they knew what they was doing. Keep following the devil and the devil's game. Learn from Adam and Eve. They, go, they turn back. You see, they got they 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 got evicted from their house. The garden was theirs. Read your Bible. God put them out the garden to make sure they don't get it back in there. He put some cherubims. Those are angels with flaming swords to make sure they don't get back in there. Mm -hmm. They got evicted. Adam had to go get a job. Mm -hmm. He was on welfare. What's this? God, God was feeding him. Mm -hmm. He was on welfare. That's right. God said, now go earn your food. Okay. Since you're going to listen to the devil. Now the woman had to have babies in pain. That's right. I guess before that she didn't have no pain because God told them to be fruitful and multiply. They're gonna have babies anyway. Right. But now you have the nine months of pain. I'm gonna remind you when that baby born that you did so. That's a curse from God. That's right. Because they probably had babies without pain before that. I don't know, but the Bible said that was part of the pain mm -hmm. and childbearing pain. Mm -hmm. Then we know Judas. He was real close to God. Some of y'all was real close to God, just like Judas was. But he betrayed his master for some money. That's right. 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. And he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He said, the one I kiss, that's, that's, my, that's my pastor. Mm -hmm. 
grab it when I kiss it. That's right. Don't let money be your demise. Amen. Then we know Jonah. Jonah, God, Jonah was a preacher. He turned back from God said, go to Nineveh and preach to, to them people, Jonah. They don't know their left hand from their right hand, but I love them, Jonah. Jonah said, I'm going on vacation. I ain't going to preach out there. That's our enemy, because that was Israel's enemy. Because he didn't want to see his enemy. Some of us don't want our enemies to get a promotion, get a new car, get a new house. Nope. You ain't going to that baby shower they invited you to. She, she don't speak to me. She, ain't, she got nerd. Don't, don't speak to me. You're going to invite me to the shower. But you the light of the world. Right. That's it. You go if you want to go. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> but you know what? Too many of us do tit for tat. That's it. That's it. That's right. We ain't turning no other cheek. We'll hit on the other cheek, but we ain't turning no other cheek. Amen. And then what Jesus did, <clears throat> and how many of us want to be like Jesus? We say that, but do we mean that? Amen. When they slapped him, what did he say? He never said a word. Thank you. On the cross, he said, Father, forgive him. I would have said, Daddy, get him. Look to him, they say, he ain't Jesus, he ain't Jesus. He trying to be, but I said, get. well, you come slap me, and I, I call all them angels. That's why Jesus had to die. He was the only one that could humble himself. Like a Bible say, a sheep led to the slaughter. If that hog know you was going to make bacon out of me, run away. But not Jesus. He ran to the altar to be yes. crucified. Yes. Matter of fact, he knew Judas was going to turn him in too. Yes. He told Judas, that thou do us, do us quickly. That's right. Let's get this show on the road. That's right. For I came to die. Oh, that's a bad man right there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. oh, I came to die. Mm -hmm. Most of us, when we get to, if we think we're going to die, we're going to go medicine. <laughs> <laughs> what my cream? What my cream? Then we're going to look at Brother Samson. He our golden topic. Look to the next day. He's going to take his time. He's going to take his time. Now I want to explain. Samson was unique. He was born under the Nazarite vow. God gave his parents specific instructions. This child here is going to be blessed. He's going to be the warrior of the Lord, and he gonna be a Nazarite vow. Take the Nazarite vow, which means you cannot never shave his head. He was gonna be a. He can't drink no alcohol. He can't. He gonna be anointed from the womb, just like Jeremiah. Amen. And so God already gave his parents instructions on how to raise him because he was gonna be a worker for the Lord. And so Samson, and I know his parents gave him the commandments because. He went down to Tenema one day and saw a Philistine girl. Now, a Philistine girl is a woman that doesn't worship the same God they worship. And Samson loved her. And he told his mom and dad, he said, I saw a girl in the camp of the Philistines, and I want y'all to get her for me because I want to marry her. And his parents say, son, why can't you marry a woman that's of our people? Mm -hmm. that's right. They told him that because they didn't want that woman to turn him away from God. That's right. Amen. Amen. And sometimes what we're going through is because we hooked up to the wrong people. What I mean by the wrong people, they don't share your your, your values or your views. And so, yeah, y'all can still make it together, but it'd be a rock and roll instead of you want your life, your relationship, your marriage, whatever, your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, until y'all get engaged. You don't want the engagement to be rocky. Exactly. You want the engagement to be what? Smooth. So his parents say, son, why you can't pick a girl among our people? He said, no, get her for me. Mm -hmm. So he married her. That's right. And her daddy said, well, I thought you really loved her. He gave his wife away to his friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, read it. Amen. And Samson says, well, I'm going to put forth a riddle. I'm going to put forth a riddle. Y'all tell me what this riddle means, and I may not kill all y'all. Because he can kill you with a, he, he kills, slew some men with the jaw, bone, of an ass, a donkey's jawbone. You know how you, 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 you did. He kills some people with a, with a donkey's denture. That's how strong he was. Amen. And then they went to his wife and said, you better tell us what that riddle is or we're going to kill you and your family. And she told him, and the people guessed the riddle. And so he set their field on fire. He set some fire to some fox's tail. He got some fire, put fire on their tail, turn loose, and they feel burning crops up. Samson didn't play. 
And then he went down to Gaza. He saw a beautiful prostitute. He slept with her. Spent the night all night. And they say he in that prostitute house. Now he messed with all these women. His parents already told him, can't you get you a woman of our people? Which was part of the Mosaic law. God gave Moses a law on what type of people that he wanted the children of Israel to marry. The women and the men, he said, don't let your sons marry their daughters because they're going to serve other gods and they're going to take them away from me and they're not going to serve me no more and don't have no babies with these kind of people. That was part of the Mosaic law. We're going to get into that next week. I'm just giving you a little uh, introduction. He slept with that prostitute all night. She was from Gaza which was a heathen nation. They were, he wasn't supposed to mess with them kind of girl. If you're gonna have a girlfriend, you're supposed to have a Hebrew or Israelite girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But he didn't obey his parents, so he turned him back from God. When you don't, what the Bible say for children in New Testament? Children are what? Obey your parents in the what? Lord! That's right. Some of y'all ain't obeyed your parents growing up, and you still ain't listening, and that's why you struggle. That's right, amen. That don't mean your parents don't control you, but sometimes God use your parents to speak scriptures to you, to remind you of who you are, you belong to God. That's right. Amen. And so they, he didn't listen to his parents. Mm -hmm. He went on and dated the kind of women, and they told him, why you can't, and I want y'all to keep remembering this part, why you can't get you a woman among your people? Right. And right. Samson said, no, get her for me. So he ended up breaking up with that Philistine woman, then he got him a prostitute, he dated her for a little while, and then, down, then he went down to the valley of Sarek. And he saw a beautiful woman. He fell in love with her, and her name was Delilah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right, that's right. He's still dating them women. His that's parents right. told him not that's to date. Right. Uh -huh. that's right. And you know what happened with Delilah? Yes. Mm -hmm. He was weak behind her. She say, Samson, Samson, you don't love me because you won't yeah. tell me why you're so strong. He said, I'm just, I'm just strong. I'm just, you know. He said, tie me up with some ropes and then I'll be weak like another man. And then they, she, she played with him. When he falls asleep, she said, the Philistine is coming. The Philistine is coming. That was his enemy. Mm -hmm. He was born to defeat the Philistine. Right. That's why he was raised to defeat the Philistines. Mm -hmm. They was Israel's enemy. Mm -hmm. And he'll break the cord. And she said, Samson. And she started crying. Watch it when people cry on mm -hmm. Y'all listen at yeah. me now. I'm going to stay right there for a few <laughs> seconds. Watch it when people crown you. Yes. Amen. She started crying on him because she knew mm -hmm. Samson loved her right. against his parents' wishes. Mm -hmm. She said, Samson, why you always lie to me? You keep lying to me. Every time I ask you why you so strong or where you get your anointing from, you don't tell me the truth. And finally, she made him fall asleep on her lap. Probably fed him some oxtail and some <laughs> collard green. And gave him a root beer so like pastor life. <laughs> And say, baby, take a nap. He said, well, I'm going to go lie down on the back. She said, no, lay right here on, my, on mama's lap. Uh, uh, uh. Probably scratching his old scalp, making him feel good. You know how it was somebody scratch your old scalp. Hey, hey, Rub your bald head, whatever, <laughs> and play with your ear, you know, you sleeping. And she said, tell me where your strength lies, Samson. Man. You, you still operating in disobedience, though. Mm -hmm. You think you really got it going on because things going your way. You still operating in disobedience, what I'm trying to say. Amen. Amen. He said, if you just cut my hair, I'll be weak like another man. Oh. She cut his hair. Well, she didn't cut it. She called the men in that was hiding in the room, That's and they right. cut his hair. That's right. And she said, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. This time, his anointed had left. Mm. And they took him, and they bounded him up, tied him up, blinded him, yep. and made him grind cornmeal to make cornbread like an ox for the people because they, they grind the meal to make flour and bread. Mm -hmm. And he realized that he sinned against God and his parents. And he said, Lord, he felt it. When they blindfolded him, he felt a pillar. He knew that big old pillar held up the building. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, give me my anointing one more time so I can kill all my enemies that caused me to be blind and make shame of my life. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave him that anointing. And the Bible said he pushed that big old pillar down it was all kind of people sitting. You know how they go to the how they go to the road and sit on the gate. Some people, mm -hmm. when 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 they have a block party, they sit on top of the buildings, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. He pushed that pillar down, and they say he killed more men in his debt than he did all his life as a warrior. Mm -hmm. But that was the end of his life because he turned back from what he was fully anointed. He was anointed 
from birth. We come to church, we pray, we fast to be anointed. He was anointed from birth. And the lesson we need to learn from Samson is don't turn from God no matter what happens. That's right. No turning back. Give the Lord a hand clap. A praise in Jesus' name.